Hi everyone, Svetlana Sotak here and in this video I'm going to show you how to make this vinyl zipper pouch. The pouch features a front vinyl so you can easily see what's inside and you can sew it in five different sizes depending on your needs. And here are the finished five sizes of the pouch so you can have a better idea of what they approximately look like. So this is the extra small size and it would make a great coin pouch or a trinket pouch. Now the small size I think is perfect to be used as a pencil case or maybe even a makeup bag. A medium size is perfect for knitting needles, painting brushes or some other craft supplies that are a bit longer. A large size is great to be used as a project bag and an extra large size is perfect for keeping some quilting blocks organized. You can keep them nice and flat. You can see what's inside the pouch. And here's the back of the pouch. You can see I'm using some quilting cotton for the backing and it's nice and squishy thanks to the inner facing that I've used in these pouches. In this video, I'll be making a small size of the pouch, which finishes at eight and a half inches wide by five inches tall. And you can find a link to the pattern in the description box down below. And the pattern will include cutting measurements as well as printable templates for all five sizes. Let's start by talking about the materials we need. So I recommend using PTU vinyl for the front window of the pouch. And I'm using a printed PTU vinyl, but you can definitely use just simple plain vinyl as well. And I recommend somewhere between 16 to 20 gauge vinyl. Now we will also need a nylon zipper by the foot. It's important to make sure that it is a nylon zipper. So this way you can cut it down to size and you can sew over it without damaging your machine. And this is a number five nylon zipper by the foot. But if you don't have that, you can use a standard number five uh, bag making zipper. Then you will just place it on a flat surface cut it down to size, avoiding all the metal stops at the end. Just make sure you move your zipper pull in the middle and cut it to size, prepare it the same way as we did this one. So either zipper by the foot or regular zipper, just make sure it's a number five zipper because it gives you nice wide zipper tape on each end. We'll also need fabric for the back of the pouch as well as the bindings and I'm using good quality quilting cotton for both. Now one last thing that we need is this foam interfacing and I am using Soft and Stable by Annie. I just love that it makes for a super sturdy, cushy, finished uh, pouch. But if you don't have foam interfacing on hand, you can also use fusible fleece or even a layer of the quilting batting. I already went ahead and cut out all my panels according to the cutting instructions. But before we start sewing, I just wanted to share a few tips on working with vinyl. So it definitely feels differently than a quilting cotton would. And um, it's not really that difficult to sew with. You just have to keep a few things in mind. So one of them is you do not use iron on the vinyl. It would melt. So you just finger press it and um, that's it. If your vinyl is creased in some places before you want to use it, I would recommend stretching it out and putting a few books on top of it and keeping it there for a few hours and it will be nice and flat then. If you need to uh, connect two fabrics together or vinyl and a fabric, use your sewing clips. Do not use any pins or they would damage your vinyl. But even with the sewing clip, I try to clip it within the seam allowance so it doesn't leave any dents in my vinyl. Now, as far as sewing goes, I just use a um, standard needle, 9014, I think works great for me. Uh, in my sewing machine and a standard presser foot is fine, but you could definitely use a Teflon foot if that's what you have on hand. Um, as far as another thing for sewing goes, it's good to use good quality polyester thread. I'm using my Gutterman thread and I usually lengthen my stitch to three millimeters when sewing with vinyl. So I think we are now ready to start sewing.
Let's start, shall we? I'm going to start by preparing my zipper binding. So here is my strip that is one and a half inches tall. I'm going to place it right side down on the ironing surface and then fold it in half lengthwise. And I'm going to take my iron, which is set to a cotton setting, and just press it. I'm using steam while I do that because I want my crease to be really nice and neat. Now I'm going to open up the strip and fold the long edge towards the middle fold. And again, I'm using my hot iron to make the edge nice and crisp. One side, I'll turn it to the other side and do the same. And now I'm going to open the vinyl strip and place it over the top edge of the vinyl panel, like so. I'm going to push the panel all the way towards the middle fold and enclose the top edge in my binding. And I'm going to use my sewing clips to hold the binding in place. So, so again, um, the clips are only within the binding. I don't want to damage my vinyl. And this is what the vinyl looks like. It's enclosed on both sides, like so. Now, and now I'm going to take this panel to the sewing machine and edge stitch along this folded edge using 1 16th inch seam allowance, stitching through all the layers. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to sew slowly to make sure my binding doesn't bunch up while I'm attaching it to the vinyl. And as you may have noticed, I lifted up my um, panel a little bit as I was sewing, because sometimes it can be sticking to your sewing machine. So if you lift it up as you sew, you help it move along. Now it's time to attach one part of the zipper to our vinyl panel. So I'm going to separate my zipper. Now this of course can only be done if you're using zipper by the foot. If you're using a standard zipper, don't worry about that. Just work with the zipper as is. And I'll place it on a piece of um, paper here so I don't damage my work surface. And I'm going to uh, add just a line of um, a glue here within the seam allowance, like maybe not farther than one eighth inch away from the edge of the zipper. And this will hold my zipper in place nicely when I'm attaching it. So I have my zipper right here, keep it all nice and straight, and I will place my vinyl on top, like so. And I'm going to leave about one quarter inch in between the edge of the panel and the zipper teeth. So I have ni a nice wide uh, zipper tape here. So I will leave about one quarter of an inch gap in, in here, like so. And now I'm just going to push it down on both sides to make sure that the zipper is attached, like so. I can still use a few pins, uh, I mean clips, on the sides like this to ensure that it stays in place. And again, I'm going to take the panel to the sewing machine and stitch along this top edge using 1 16th inch seam allowance. And again, I will be going stitching through all the layers, attaching the zipper in place. And again, I'm going to sew slowly and I am going to lift up my panel a little bit just to prevent it from sticking to my sewing machine. Okay. 
I will now add my zipper pull and the other part of the zipper to my panel. And now I'm going to take the panel to the sewing machine and stitch a few stitches back and forth right here on both ends just to secure the zipper in place. And I will trim the edges of the zipper flush with the edge of my panel. Okay, so I trimmed the sides of my uh, zipper. And at this point, my panel should measure eight and a half inches wide by five inches tall. If for some reason my panel was a little bit longer, I would just go ahead and cut along this bottom edge to make sure it's five inches all the way from here. It's five inches. And I'm going to set this panel aside for a little bit while I work on the backing of my pouch. I will now make a small quilt sandwich by placing one back panel right side down on a flat surface. Then I will put a layer of foam interfacing on top and I will put a second back panel on top, like so. So now I have a nice quilt sandwich. I can then go ahead and press it a little bit to keep everything in place. I can also use a few pins to hold the three layers together. And I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and do a little bit of quilting. Now, it really is up to you what kind of quilting you want to do. I think I'm just gonna do a few random crosshatch lines. Once my back panel was quilted, this is the same on both sides, I trimmed it down to match the exact size of the front panel. So for the small pouch, it's going to be eight and a half inches wide by five inches tall. And now I'm going to place the panels together like so. And I'm going to add the clips all the way around the perimeter of the pouch so it holds the both layers together. And it's good to use a lot of clips because you want to keep these two layers as stable as possible when you are sewing. And now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and stitch all the way around the perimeter of the pouch using 1 8 inch seam allowance. And I found that it's easier for me to stitch when I flip the pouch uh, fabric side up. So after I stitch the zipper on, I will flip it fabric side up and I'll be stitching along this edge right here. And I will be lifting up again my pouch a little bit to prevent nylon from sticking to my sewing machine. I'm going to set the pouch aside for a bit and uh, prepare the binding. So here are my two binding strips and I'm just going to place them right sides together and stitch along the short end. I will use a quarter inch seam allowance to sew these two bindings together. 
and I will backstitch at the beginning and end. Okay. And now it forms one continuous strip and it's time to take it to the pressing board. Okay, and the first thing I need to do is press this seam open. So this way my binding form forms nice long strip. Press the seam open using a lot of steam again to make it nice and flat. And now I'm going to fold my binding in half lengthwise, like so, and press it. Now the binding is ready to be added to the pouch. And I'm going to start adding the binding along the bottom edge of the pouch. So I will place the end of the binding with the raw edge, the one right here, raw edge is touching the raw edge of the pouch. I'll place it about halfway through the uh, bottom edge of the pouch, but I will start sewing about maybe an inch and a half away from the from the side edge right here. So I will be using one quarter inch seam allowance to attach the binding and I am going to attach it first to the front of the pouch and then flip it and attach it to the back. So I will backstitch at the beginning. Like so and I will stop stitching quarter inch before I get to the edge of the pouch and I can feel with my finger with my nail where the edge is so I keep that in mind going to stop sewing quarter inch away from that I will lift up my presser foot and stitch to the corner like so I have this nice neat corner right here and now I will lift up my binding and bring it down again like so. I will move the zipper out of my way. And now with your finger, you can see where the folded binding is. And I'll start stitching here at this point. Again, using quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and end. So again, I'll start stitching. And I'm going all the way, using the edge of my binding as a guide. And I will start stop sewing quarter inch away from the top edge. So again, I will mark it with my nail right here. I'm quarter inch away. Again, I will tilt it right here and sew it at a 45 degree angle, like so. And again, turn the pouch, bring the binding up, like so. This way the binding's edge lines up with the edge of the pouch and bring it back down. But I'm holding my finger here at this edge so the binding also lines up with the side edge of the pouch. Okay, like so. And again, stitching right here. I will move my zipper pull. I never want to sew around it. I'd like to just lift up my presser foot, move it out of the way, then bring the zipper, uh, the presser foot down and continue sewing. And now I'm at the last corner, so I will start sewing again, quarter inch uh, away from the edge, but I will only sew about one and a half inches and stop. All right. Okay, and now I have these two loose ends of the binding and I need to connect them together. So I'm going to trim this one down a little bit Kind of bring it more to the middle, like so. And now I will bring the second binding over it and I will overlap it by half an inch. So I will bring my ruler here, 
here is the edge of my binding of the first binding at number nine i will bring the second binding over it and i will cut the top binding at nine and a half inch mark like so only the top binding okay so they are overlapping by half an inch like so now i'll re remove the ruler and i'm going to now open up this binding open it up and bring right sides bring it right sides together like so i will use a few clips to hold it in place the clips it's okay if you sort of fold the pouch here don't be too forceful but it helps if you fold it up gently and then i'm going to stitch along this edge using quarter inch seam allowance and i will back stitch at the beginning and end and again i just want to keep everything as lined up as possible so so slowly take your time Now, all I need to do is see how nicely it falls flat. I'm just going to press, just finger press this seam open like so. There we go. Finger press it a little bit and I will refold it again. And now my lining lies nice and flat and I will reclip it again just in two places so I can finish my sewn line here so again using quarter inch seam allowance finishing attaching the binding to the front of the pouch all right so this is what our pouch looks like at this point. So we are pretty much done with all the machine sewing because now we are going to flip the binding over to the back side and then hand sew the binding in place. Now you could definitely do the sewing in place by machine as well, but I find that it gives a nicer, neater finish when I do it by hand. So um, I'll get my sewing, uh, hand sewing supplies ready and we'll sew the binding on. So I have my needle and thread ready. I made a knot uh, at the end and I'm ready to start attaching the binding in place. So this is what the pouch looks like on the front. I'll flip it um, right side down and you can totally use some clips to hold your binding in place. I personally prefer just to attach it as is. So I'm going to start close to the corner right here. My uh, um, knot holds the needle and the thread in place. And now I'm just going to attach a little bit of the binding with my thread. I don't want the stitches to be too visible. So I'm just catching it just only a few millimeters in just so i hold it uh, catch it in place and also when i run my needle through the fabric i only stay within the backing i don't want the needle to be coming out on the front side of the pouch okay so just be careful with that don't go too deep and pull it really nice and tight and again another stitch so i'll just go ahead and a stitch until I get to the corner. And when I'm at the corner of the pouch, I like to fold the corner nice and neat like that. Hold it in place. Just, again, you can use a clip to hold it in place. I just uh, hold it with my finger and keep it in place there. And then just do one stitch in the corner right here, securing it neatly. And again, doing very small stitches. You don't want them to be too visible. Okay, oops. So I got it a little bit tangled up in here, but I can fix that. There we go. And now I will turn the pouch this way and I will continue sewing uh, and attaching the binding in place like so. All the way around the pouch.
and again be careful so you don't your needle doesn't come out on the other side because you would damage your vinyl but also it doesn't look very professional when those stitches show up okay so you don't want these uh, stitches where you attach the binding to be visible on the front at all And I almost went all the way around the pouch. Now I just need to finish a few more stitches and the binding will be done. And when I get to where I started, I will make a neat knot right here, as small as possible. Right here. And then I will run my thread through the fabric and the interfacing. See, it doesn't come out on the other side. Just run it through the fabric like so, and then snip it off. And that's it the pouch is now finished now finished so here's the front of the pouch and the back of the pouch i hope you enjoyed this video and will give sewing with vinyl a try and don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos bye